Hello everyone, good to see you. We're glad to be able to spend this time together, Pastor Harry and myself, with you on another installment of Hymn of the Week. We look forward to these and the music that stirs our heart. Today's theme is joy, and music certainly is something that brings us joy, that uh, stirs us in that uh, deep inner place. You know, the word joy is a small word, but it carries a lot of weight with it. The word happy is a longer word, but maybe it's a little different than what we're getting at when we talk about joy. Of course, happiness is a wonderful thing, and we all uh, wish for happiness in our lives, in the lives of our children and those whom we love. We want people to be happy. But there's something about joy that takes us to a deeper place that encompasses happiness but doesn't necessarily need it. And as we think about that today, we'll ponder several scriptures and I'd like us to turn to these now. The first one is John chapter 15, verses 7 to 11, which says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may may be complete. The joy of Jesus in us and that our joy may be complete, that's an astounding statement when you stop and think about it. To have complete joy and that it's accessible through Jesus. Well, let's turn to Philippians chapter four. Philippians is often referred to as the joy book. And here we have at the end of the book of Philippians, a few verses that talk about rejoicing. Rejoice. It's not a word we use so much in this day and age, but it's a good word. And here we turn to what Paul says about it. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, With thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Joy and peace woven together. And finally, we go to Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Joy carries us, the joy of Jesus, and seeing Jesus go all the way to the cross and somehow attaching joy to that, it's a powerful thought and very instructive for us. So now we turn to our Hymn of the Week story and look forward to what we can learn and uh, discover in that. So, Pastor Harry. The theme of this series of hymns is the fruit of the Spirit. Our hymn theme is, the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Our hymn of the week is rejoice, the Lord is King. The author Charles Wesley, who lived from 1707 to 1789. The composer John Darwell. Our hymn of the week is a hymn of joy. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Of the 87 hymns featured on Hymn of the Week thus far, this is the fifth by Charles Wesley, 
who wrote more than 6,500 hymns. Some of his hymns were seasonal hymns. For Christmas, he wrote, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. For Good Friday, Amazing Love. For Easter, Christ the Lord is risen today. And in 1744, a hymn for Ascension Day, Rejoice, the Lord is King. All are joyful and celebrative in tone expressing the joy that is in each of these events. Every fruit of the Spirit derives its meaning from whom God is. God is love. He is also joy. One of our favorite Old Testament passages reads, The joy of the Lord is your strength, Nehemiah 8.10. Jesus, who was in every way, like God, because he is God, was the most joyful person this world has ever seen. His promise to us in John 15, 10, and 11 reads, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Only God's joy is complete. And this joy is ours through Jesus. The gift of the Holy Spirit is Christ alive in us. And the fruit of the Spirit, the joy of Christ flowing through us. It's not only a joy we possess, but a joy we can't help but express. It is both attractive and enduring, enduring, and is given to us to bless the world with it. Paul's words to us have real purpose and meaning when he wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. We can all recall experiences of joy. Perhaps that's why we've taken photos and also why we sit down to look through albums in order to relive our joys. But we're also, we've also experienced pain, sickness, suffering, weakness, failure, and loss of everything that once gave us joy. God's joy is not only a present reality, but a future hope. It is forward-looking, and even when we've lost everything, including our life, our joy remains, for God's joy is everlasting. Of Jesus we read, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Its kingdom is a kingdom of joy, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 12, 17. We can rejoice, for Jesus our Lord is King, in the words of our hymn of the week. Verse 1 says, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Your King and Lord adore. Verse 2, Jesus the Savior reigns, the God of truth and love. Verse 3, the king, Thy kingdom cannot fail. He rules on earth and heaven. Verse 4, Rejoice in glorious hope. Our Lord, the King, shall come. Each declaration is followed by the refrain, Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice. Again I say rejoice. What's become even more evident to us are the convoys of discontent, highways and parking lots jammed with rigs and protesters demanding that 
which cannot give us everlasting joy. It is not society or governments that are the root problem. Rather, it is our false self-serving self. What is required is a crucifixion of that self to give room to our true self, which is Christ alive in us. As Paul himself bears witness, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The fruit of the Spirit is Christ living in me, and his joy flowing through me. The prophet Isaiah spoke of another way in Isaiah 35, he spoke of a new highway built by God, a highway called the way of holiness. In New Testament terms, the way of Christ-likeness. Neither the unclean nor the foolish will walk in that way, but only the redeemed will walk there. They will enter Zion, not the old city, of Jerusalem, but the new Jerusalem. Those walking that highway are a convoy of exiles. The ransomed of the Lord, returning, singing songs of joy. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away, away. The fruit of the Spirit has at least three dimensions to it. There's the joy of our salvation. David, having failed miserably, prayed, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. There's a present joy which is Christ alive in me and his joy flowing through me. The reason why Paul could write, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, is also a forward-looking joy, the joy that is set before us, the joy that sustains us in our greatest trial because our future is assured. We walk the highway of holiness, of Christ-likeness, and enter the new Jerusalem with singing, with songs of joy, and with the excitement of that future. Listen to our hymn of the week as played by Calvin and Heather Dick. Rejoice, the Lord is King, by Charles Wesley, our Hymn of the Week.